miles aside from my soul. So we're gonna be racing down the big hill. When I was a kid, this was called the big hill. Here we go. All right, you, if you guys, okay. Many of you know that Kristen and I, well me, I am a super coffee, crazy coffee person. She's more tea. Anyway, um, our coffee maker's kind of being like butts lately, so I've always wanted to try French press. So we've got a French press today, and we're gonna try it out. We're gonna make some coffee real quick, and then we're gonna do it Sunday, so we're gonna do our mental health video. Mental health video. So um, you have to have whole beans, and so we have to grind them up first, and then try this thingy, and then see is it worth all the hype. Anyway, let's make some coffee. Wait a minute. Let's do a making a French press coffee montage. That's very specific. Do you want to say cute montage music? Cute montage music. You're supposed to snap. Cute montage music. Let's make some coffee. Excited, here we go. Should cheers it, I think. Cheers, careful, don't spill it on me. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Here's what? your cup, do something different when it's Yeah, it really changes different. colors. It's really cool. It's pretty nice. It does taste stronger. Yeah. All right, to French right. pressing. <laughs> Every Sunday we wanna schedule out some time to talk about mental health because that's one area where we feel like we have some ex personal experience and can reach out and help people. So we always wanna talk about mental health on Sundays and last Sunday we talked about the show 13 Reasons Why and we talked about Kristen's and, and my personal story. We talked about the beginning, what happened when it first occurred. And if you haven't watched that one yet, we definitely recommend you watch that mm -hmm. one first to kind of frame your mind and, and frame the story because this is part two. This is what happens next. Mm -hmm. What happens after, what happened after Kristen got her, the help she needed? What happened after she was admitted to the hospital? The, this is the then what? Getting back to normal. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, we were driving back to Chicago and after I was able to convince Kristen to go to the hospital, we turned around, drove three and a half hours back to um, the hospital and got her admitted. And that's where she stayed for a week. About, yeah, about 10 days. Basically the timing of this was interesting because it happened during my my uh, Christmas break, mm -hmm. which, was, which led me to be able to be around, which was really nice because it would have been very hard for me to have been back in Chicago and her around here and I don't know, that, that probably wouldn't have worked out very well. So it was nice that I was able to be in the area and this, the part for me that was difficult because there's always two sides. There's the person going through it, which obviously is worse, but, but at the same time, your spouse, or your loved ones that are also going through it with mm -hmm. you and um, the hard part for me was I just wanted to see results like right then, you know, like you go to the doctor and it's like, all right, what kind of medicine do you get? And you're better. Right. And like, I, I didn't, I wasn't able at that point in my life to understand that it's going to take a while. And, um, the few, when I, I would visit Kristen every day and I was just so, dis I was just so discouraged at first because I was like, what is going on? Like, but the thing was they had to try out different medicines. And that's why she had to stay there was because they had to see how each medicine would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So that, yeah, so that's basically like a lot of what I did while I was there. So 
So we want to talk a little bit about what happened when I got home. Yeah, she got. Yeah. Then eventually she was able. She was um, discharged, and we we went back to Chicago because I still had to finish up the school year. Our lives were in Chicago. That's where we had our apartment, and so you know we couldn't just up and stop everything. We had to go back to Chicago and start our lives again. So we went back, and Kristen. Through all of this, Kristen obviously quit her job that she was working at, and so she didn't have a job. And I was talking to Kristen earlier today to make sure that I have this right, because she's more the expert on mental health, and I was just kind of wanted to make sure that I had what I was gonna say right. But when you're dealing with mental health, especially depression and anxiety, there's a clinical medical aspect, there's, there's a clinical medical aspect to it where it's your brain or body does not produce a certain chemical or the right amount of a chemical, and, and you need that medicine, some people need medicine to help correct it. Correct it. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a, but there's also a behavioral portion to it too, where she was depressed, but she, so she wasn't working. Her, she didn't see a purpose for her life. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's, you know, I mean, even I get depressed towards the end of summer when I haven't been teaching for months, I'm, I'm walking around going, what's my purpose? You know, to an and, extent. To an extent, but like, but you know what, like, I mean, it, when you're not doing something that you love or doing anything you feel like is worthwhile, it can mm -hmm. be depressing. Absolutely. And um, so I had talked to my principal and got the okay to have Kristen come in and Kristen was basic, Kristen basically finished out the school year with me in my room being a teacher's aide. And it was awesome. And, yeah. and tell them a little bit about that. Yeah, it was really awesome. I actually got to do, um, do a small group where I worked um, for uh, like with some of the kids in uh, small groups individually for reading and some math skills and it was really good. It really taught me a lot of things. It, and it made you, how did it make you feel? Oh, I would say that it definitely helped me get my confidence back. Yeah. She, she was able to see, you know, because in the depression, in that dark stage, mm -hmm. she was feeling worthless. Like she couldn't do anything right, you know, mm -hmm. and, and she had had trouble. And remember you had some trouble with your jobs. I like did. she did this so Kristen's a beautiful singer. You guys know that. Mm -hmm. um, she also dabbles with the piano, and she can play the piano. She has to really work hard at it, though. Like, mm -hmm. it's not coming natural to you, right? You would say that doesn't come Oh, out. no, it doesn't. So no. she actually had taken a job at, like, a children's, like, daycare thing where mm -hmm. she was, like, it was, like, music-based, and she was asked to play piano. And you had, and, like, you I remember, like, you had to, like, practice every single day, all night, every evening, mm -hmm. and it just wore you out. N not until we got back to Chicago after the um, hospitalization, and you started doing good at something. Right. So, <laughs> initially, like, what I had uh, ended up doing while I is I was an activities assistant for about, about six months, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed that. At a nursing home. At a nursing home, yep. And assisted living as well, and I really enjoyed it. I really made people smile, was good at it, but it just really wasn't, wasn't working out hours wise. And I was thinking more and more, you know, maybe there's a reason that I went through what I went through and maybe I can use that to help somebody. Yep. God's plan. And you know, yeah. um, we talk about this all the time, but I, I, I want to finish the story quick before I, I add more. But, um, so basically she helped teach her aid with me and I was by her side every single, like we were by, we were together every day. And you know, having some like me personally, and her and her parents and my family, we're all kind of a little bit worried that like, okay, she was suicidal, and and we didn't want to be, her to be alone. So this really worked out. She got to come to work with me every day, and so I got to see every day her get a little bit better and a little bit better. And I had the comfort of knowing that she was with me. If anything happened, I was right there. You know, mm -hmm. I you know, so that was very comforting. I think for the both of us. Right. And we finished out the school year, and by the end of the year. Her medicine was working right. She was seeing a therapist. Everything was really clicking. Mm -hmm. And we decided, you know what? It's time to move back to Ohio, where mm -hmm. our family is, because um, we want to be surrounded by that support network and that support system. So I told my school that I wasn't going to be back. We canceled our lease. And uh, the day after school got out in Chicago, we moved back to this house right here. Um, and that's, that's that. That's the story. And... Um, it's not over though. We, you know, that's something that we live with every day. So now bringing that to like present day, um, realizing that it's not, that's part of who you are. Yeah, it is. And it's accepting it. And part of it is being open for me. It's being open enough to share it with others in different capacities. Like this has actually been really helpful for me to share and connect with others and well and too like we and we talked about real quick like how she like we now can look back on it and go oh yeah 
That's mm-hmm. why this happened. So mm-hmm. if that wouldn't have happened, we wouldn't be doing this right here. Right. We wouldn't have moved back to Ohio. I probably would have never started YouTube. She would have never wanted to share her story and help people. It's everything that happens in your life happens for a reason. And um, we got to stop looking at things. Not Things aren't happening to us. They're happening for us. The good and the bad. There's mm-hmm. always something, always a lesson to be learned. So... Um, there's always something to be learned. We have to realize that that's part of her story. That's part of our story together. Mm-hmm. And it, it's my job to remember and realize that there's going to be days where Kristen's a bit more depressed or anxious. And, and I can't get like, oh, come on. No, not again. Mm-hmm. I have to accept that that's just the way things are going to be. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's her job to let me know when things aren't right and we can yeah. correct it. And, um, and, you know, sometimes I know it kind of sounds cliche, but sometimes things almost have to get worse to get better. There was a lot of healing and a lot of growth Mm -hmm. that came through all of that darkness. Yeah, I can honestly say I never would have thought that you and I would be sitting in front of a camera sharing our story, um, feeling happy about what happened and Mm -hmm. positive towards the future. Because it got dark and it got low, but we broke through it and worked together. We did. And now it's springtime outside and it's beautiful and we can kind of, it's kind of like the growth that we made. Mm Things in bloom. Everything's new. So wanted to share this with you guys to finish up Kristen's story so you can know what, where she came from to where she is now. So find your gift. Share it with the world. And remember, you, you are, are worth it. it. See you tomorrow.